Hello and welcome to The Third Rail, the place of the odd and unusual and sometimes the unexplainable. Uh, uh, you have a helicopter going out of uh, a Caribbean island on a, on a regular basis because the Navy likes to test fire uh, some of its, its, its cruise missile technology and whatnot. And what will happen is that, that after the, the cruise missile runs out of fuel, it kind of falls into the splashes into the ocean, it will sink. And then at a certain time, it kind of, it kind of rises up and we, we go and fetch it. Uh, and we, we, we analyze it for telemetry and things like that. Uh, long story short, helicopter crew goes out uh, to, to recover one of these things. Uh, as they are recovering it uh, the first time, the missile, uh, they're pulling up and, and something, what was described round and circular about the size of a small island, uh, black, dark color starts rising to the surface. It doesn't break the water, but it starts rising to the surface. They, they thought, wow, that's really, really peculiar. Well, the next month goes around and they go out to retrieve this, uh, this, this, the, another missile that was test fired. And this time you've got a frogman hanging down from the rope about to, to latch on to the, to the missile. And uh, this thing starts coming out of the water again. And if you know about the Puerto Rican trench out there, you're talking about water that's 22,000 feet deep. It's, yeah. it's the second deepest part of the ocean. The thing starts rising up, and and as the thing is starting to come to the surface, the frogman is is literally trying to climb the rope. They're doing an emergency ascent. Everybody is absolutely panic at the disco, freaking out. Uh, you know what the hell is that? What's going on? And as they start to pull up, uh, it's it, it sucks the missile underwater and then disappears, never to be seen again. America West Flight Five Sixty Four was flying from Tampa, Florida, to Las Vegas, Nevada. Captain Eugene Tollefson and First Officer John Waller were in control, cruising at 39,000 feet above Bovina, Texas. Everything was normal until 10.25 p.m., when the pilot spotted a UFO just below them at 30,000 feet. We have obtained the actual recording of exchanges between Albuquerque Air Traffic Control, Flight 564, and NORAD. Okay, There's nothing on their radar on the other spinners at all on that uh, particular area, that object that's up in the air. Uh, it's up in the air. A permanent. What's the altitude about? I don't know, probably right around 30,000 or so, and it's uh, with a drill that starts from going uh, counterclockwise, and uh, the length is unbelievable. The pulsating object was reportedly over 400 feet long, yet invisible on radar. This prompted air traffic control to contact nearby Cannon Air Force Base radar operations in Clovis, New Mexico. Cannon, go ahead. Hey, guy at 39,000 says he sees something at 30,000. The length is unbelievable and it has a strobe on it. Uh-huh. This is not good. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, what does that mean? I don't know. It's a UFO. So it's the Roswell crap again. The crew that saw it described it as a long, thin object, cylindrical, with a series of lights down the side, blinking on and off in sequence. They saw a cigar-shaped object flying with strobing lights on a length of uh, uh, roughly 300 feet, which is quite big. Seconds later, an Air Force F-117A Nighthawk from the 49th Fighter Wing at Holloman Air Force Base was alerted by air traffic control. The stealth fighter saw something. Okay, fine. In the next two to three minutes, be looking off to your right side. If you see anything about 30,000 feet, one aircraft reported to uh, something. It wasn't a weather balloon or anything. It was a long, um, white-looking thing with a strobe on it. Let me know if you see anything out there. You got any traffic off our left wing right now? Uh, I've got some passing off here at 9 o'clock and about uh, 12 at 31 westbound. Okay, so it looks like that's up about uh, a little lower than up just went off our left wing. The Nighthawk reported an object passing off its left wing. America West 564 had the same experience moments later. The object moved dangerously close to both aircraft. The anxious America West crew contacted Albuquerque Air Traffic Control again.
the object suddenly disappeared from Flight 564's view. Then a concerned Albuquerque Air Traffic Control contacted NORAD's Western Air Defense Sector Headquarters at McCord Air Force Base in Tacoma, Washington. I've got a, uh, something unusual, and I was wondering if you all happen to know of anything going on out here. I had a couple of aircraft reported something 300 to 400 foot long, cylindrical in shape with a strobe. Oh. At 30,000 feet. We don't have anything going on yeah. that I know of. This, this guy definitely saw it run all the way down the side of the airplane. It's right out of uh, the X-Files. I mean, it's a, it's a definite UFO or something like that. I, but, I mean, and, and, oh, y'all are serious about this. Yeah, he's real serious about it, too. And uh, he looked at it, saw it. Holy. 13 minutes later, Albuquerque Air Traffic Control checked in again with NORAD. Only this time, NORAD had something. We had someone call here earlier about a pilot uh, spotting an unidentified flying object. Yep, that's us. Okay, well, hey, we're tracking a, a search-only track kind of where that might have happened. We, um, we've been tracking it for about three, four minutes now. According to the official report, NORAD has denied this incident in writing. These were experienced airline pilots. They'd been flying thousands of hours. They were familiar with the sky. When they say something, you have to pay more attention to it. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? They're in our midst and they are family. We're related to them because they were the ones that had a hand in establishing us as a hybrid race a hundred thousand years ago. And that hybridization is still underway, it's still happening, even as we sit here and speak. It hasn't stopped. It's underway. They have different agendas. Some of them are nice folks and some of them are not. As I said, they have different agendas. But they're all around. The one in the upper left-hand corner there is another self-luminous object that moves all over the place. That object is over 2,000 miles long. It is an artificially constructed object over 2,000 miles long. It's about 500 miles in diameter. Can you imagine a technology and a society that can build an object 2,000 miles long for 500 miles in diameter? Oh, this, this is an object that flew up and knocked the Soviet satellite out of orbit some years ago. The Soviets sent up a damn first-rate satellite. So as you can see, this is on infrared. That is why his black and white is from STS, ST3, uh, 63, sorry. And they are trying to locate the Mir space station. They cannot locate the Mir space station because more than 100 objects are appearing and disappearing from the radar. Those are the same type of craft that I observed on the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And those are those balls of light that I was observing in those times, as you can see clearly, creating an intelligent formation. And they, wanted, and they wanted to take pictures of one of the moons. They wanted to take pictures of Phobos, one of the two moons of Mars. And while they were taking pictures, this object comes up from the surface of Mars, bumps the Soviet Phobos satellite knocks it out of orbit and it crashes. Next picture, please. What you see there is a picture of Phobos, the, the, the moon, and I mean artificial moon of Mars. And below it, you see an object that the Soviets said measured roughly 15 kilometers in length. An artificial object near Phobos, the moon, 15 kilometers in length. Next, next picture. This please. photograph was taken by your own NASA Apollo 13 guys on their, <clears throat> their, their trip to the moon. It didn't work out too well. And many of you may have heard rumors about the story, but Apollo 13 <clears throat> had a small nuclear device aboard. And they had been told by the guys that ran NASA that they were going to land on the surface, going to place this small nuclear device and then when they all left and came back aboard and came back, they were going to detonate it 
and study the reverberations of this nuclear device, study the seismology of the moon, because they've been convinced for some years that the moon is basically hollow. It appears to be somewhat of an artificial satellite. Well, they plan to develop, de detonate this nuclear device and then the others said, no, no, you're not going to do that. Uh, get back to that picture again, please. All right. The object you see there in the middle, <clears throat> over 2,000 miles long. It's an artificial, I assume metallic object, probably crammed with guys. And that object followed our Apollo 13 all the way to the moon, around and back. Now, whether they were trying to make sure the Apollo 13 guys got home safely or what, whether they were the ones responsible for Apollo 13's little accident, which kept them from landing on the moon and placing that nuclear device, who knows? We may. Over the last several years, a Miami resident named Adrian is now considered one of the best documented contact cases in history. At first, the sightings began occurring at some distance from his home, but it wasn't long before the craft began appearing over his backyard. This amazing video footage shows a glowing disc approximately nine feet in diameter hovering just feet from his house. In the blink of an eye, the craft disappears. Once the footage is slowed down, we can clearly see the craft dematerialized frame by frame. This cylindrical looking probe was videotaped outside Las Vegas, Nevada, where it hovered in the air for over four hours. The next day the probe returned and was videotaped examining the power lines. This never before seen footage was taken of a probe as it scanned the coastline of central Florida. Clearly, we can see it appears to be intelligently controlled. The probe's two sections rotated as it monitors the activities of the photographer. And yet another water sighting. This odd-shaped craft slowly descends to the water's surface, where after pausing for a moment, it slowly rises and departs. The another probe. This videotape of two similar UFOs made international headlines. Eyewitnesses watched in amazement as these craft performed acrobatic maneuvers and even dodged an oncoming airplane. Thanks for watching The Third Rail. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps a small channel like mine. See you soon.